Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the Himi Maya gouache, which is an interesting, to say the least, set of paints. I had a request to review this last year. I had a few people uh, in the viewership ask me to take a look at these and see what I thought, because um, I do use gouache quite a bit, and honestly, I have to say that there are some really fantastic, inexpensive brands out there. You don't need to spend a lot of money to get um, a decent gouache, which is very unusual. And most other types of paint, it seems like if you get the really cheap stuff, then it really shows. But gouache, I find, has, you know, you can get some surprisingly decent gouache for uh, for not a lot of money. So I contacted the company that uh, that sells this gouache. It is the company called Light Wish. They sell on Amazon, and they also make the Paul Rubens and the Pretty Excellent paints, um, as well as the Artix markers, or they distribute them anyway. I don't know if they own those brands or how it works exactly, but they sell them on Amazon. And this set of paints sells for currently uh, $17.99. There is a set that comes with the brushes, and they sent me the one with the brushes, and that set is $34. And we'll talk about the brushes in a little bit, but I'm going to focus on the paints here. Um, they come in a really interesting palette. You can see when I show you the bottom that it's a molded plastic palette that is divided. Now let's open it up here so you can see. You've got a lid which could be used as a mixing tray, but what I like is that it actually has a separate mixing tray that you can contain your mess on and pull out. Obviously the mixing tray has stained a bit because I've been using it. I was concerned that a colored mixing tray was going to be difficult to mix on and mess me up with my colors, but I've used it a few times and it absolutely hasn't, so that's kind of nice. Uh, the staining doesn't bother me. It probably can be removed with a magic eraser, but and plastic tends to stain. That's nature of the beast. Um, now, something that's kind of neat about the way the paints come is that they're all individually packaged. They come in these, oops, I got some paint on my fingers there. Um, they come in these little plastic cups. It kind of reminds me of like an ink cartridge, but they're, but it's, uh, they're called jelly cup packaging, which is, which makes sense because it's like how your jelly would come. If you go to a diner or a restaurant for breakfast, they have that little, usually like a little bowl or a little case on the table that has these little packages of jelly or peanut butter or whatever. That's the same exact idea of how they come. These are a little bit bigger than your typical, like, container of jelly, so I don't know how many milliliters they are. I've since lost the packaging, but I'll link all that information up below and I will write all that stuff out. Um, I want to show you kind of how the palette looks empty, so hopefully I've let my paint dry. Don't do this unless you've let your paint dry, but here you can see the palette itself. It's nice and thick, and uh, it doesn't feel like it's going to go brittle, um, but I like this because you could use this palette for watercolors or something else, even bead storage, if you decided that the paints weren't for you or you used them up and you didn't want to replace them. I'm going to see if I can be totally crafty and, ha, look at that, flip it over. So when I first used these paints, I've got to say I was not impressed. Uh, they were all wet, like, uh, and they reminded me of poster paints like you would have as a child. And so I did these swatches wet. Um, I thought on the white they looked pretty decent. So I did a swatch of each color and then I streaked on some white just to see what the tinting strength of the colors were. I found the tinting strength to be really good. I found the lay down on the white paper to be nice and velvety and opaque and matte. But when I did it on black cardstock, it felt a little streaky to me and I was a little disappointed. But then I let the paints dry out. What I did was I just took the lid off and then I just kind of, kind of, kind of sit, propped it open like that so it, the air could circulate. I think I turned it a little bit so some air could get under there but it wouldn't get dust and whatnot. And um, it improved the performance of these paints so much. So I recommend if you get this paint, let it dry out and then work with a, you know, reactivate it. Cause that way, the excess water dries out of the paints and then you can put back what you need. Because, you know, if you're using white and you're using it straight from the, uh, from the pan and it's liquid, it's only going to be so opaque. It's only going to be as opaque as it is right there. But if you let it dry out, then you can just add a little bit of water and you can have it very opaque or you can wash it, water it way down. I like that. Um, and it definitely makes these perform much more like a high-end gouache because I have some M. Graham gouache and some Windsor Newton gouache. So I do have experience with more expensive gouache. So letting it dry out, getting some of that water absorbed, which, you know, companies will add water to extend products. Getting that dried out of there, it it just makes it behave more like a professional paint. So I really like it. I think it's as good as um, the Arteza. I think it's right on par with the Arteza. Um, I don't have anything negative to say for the price. I think it's a great deal. It's about a dollar a color. And 
yeah, the case is wonderful. The case is definitely reusable. I would save this and use it for something else if I decided that, um, that I, well, I guess I would use this up because I'd probably use it up and refill it with my Arteza tube gouache because um, I don't like the packaging. Like, I don't like to create excess packaging, so I probably wouldn't order refills. I didn't see that these were available in America. They may be available somewhere, maybe in a country where more people paint. Like, I think countries like um, uh, a lot of the Eastern countries, like Korea, Singapore, um, Japan, and China, I think painting is more of a common hobby, so you probably could just reorder the colors you wanted. But here in the United States, I don't think it's um I don't think it's as as popular so you know you'd have to buy another set although that's you know certainly cheap enough I don't want to add more plastic to the world so what I would do is I would just refill it from tubes as needed like these tubes here I like this paint a lot too this is the renaissance gouache I don't know how many colors they make but this is a nice big tube and I could refill from that and this is a great quality gouache so you know you could always do that and um and could bring a lot more life to this to this project and the packaging. So I'm always looking at the packaging. Is the packaging going to be reuse, uh, reused? Is it useful? Is it high quality? Is it going to break? It doesn't feel like anything's going to snap off. It doesn't feel like it's going to go brittle. There's a little bit of flex to this, but it's nice and thick, so it's not going to not going to break off. I don't like those brittle plastics that turn yellow and just kind of break after a couple of years. I feel like this is going to be. Uh, sturdy for a long time, and I love the packaging. I just I love that I love the way it's set up and compact. It is a little heavy, so if you wanted to travel with this, I would recommend that you take out the colors that you're not going to use, and then maybe you could use the um, the leftover wells for your mixing water and um, and whatnot, or maybe even you know, like pull brushes or something, so that you're not having to carry this. This is probably. I guess about three pounds. It's, you know, because I'm thinking of like what a bag of beans, a one pound bag of beans weighs. This probably weighs like three bags of beans. So I would say, I would say it's about three pounds. So it's, it's kind of hefty. If you had that in your travel bag, you would feel it. Um, or a wimp like me would feel it anyway. So, oh, I'll show you a couple paintings that I did with a gouache. Now this one right here, I did pretty much completely with a gouache. I did add a smidgen of colored pencil and white pen at the end, but uh, it was nice and opaque. It layered well. Um, no qualms whatsoever about that. And then this painting here I did with, uh, I did with brush pens. And then I went over with some of the gouache there and it worked well in that respect too. So I'm pleased with the performance of it. Um, I showed you my swatches earlier. So I would say absolutely, if you need some gouache, uh, I love that it takes the, you know, you get the, the actual paint and you get a palette and you get a storage case. Because when I had the Arteza uh, gouache, I had to go out and find something that I could put them in that had high enough walls. So I had to like find a tool, a, like a fishing tackle box and glue down the dividers and then um, I could fill that with my gouache. This is all ready to go. So I like that. You don't have to go buy anything extra. So it is, it's extra affordable because of that. So, uh, so I'd say yes, go for the set. Now the brushes, the set with the brushes, now I, I think this is packaged beautifully, it's a gorgeous little set, um, but the brushes for gouache I don't think are very good. Um, they're, if you want to just put them in a jar and have them look aesthetically pleasing in your studio, they're gorgeous. They would work great for that, but if you want to actually use them, um, I find that Unless you're working on canvas, which you typically don't with gouache, the, the hog bristles are just, it just will give you a really streaky effect and will make the paint look worse. You know, it's not, for the brushes that I like for gouache, I'll show you right here. I like a golden taclon. So they're, they're brushes that have kind of like that golden hair and they, I really like them if you can find them with the acrylic or plastic candles because if you forget them in water, they're not going to swell and get ruined. Um, but you want something that's a little bit stiffer than what you use for watercolor, but you can use your watercolor brushes with this. But because I like to work with the paint dry and I like to work it a little thick, I do want a little bit stiffer of a brush because it could hurt my watercolor brushes really, like if I look at this one here, if you see how soft, uh, soft that brush is, you know, that would damage the brush if I'm really scrubbing it in there to get up to get paint. And here's a better example. This round was nice and see how soft that is. So I'd want something that is, you know, a little bit stiffer when I'm using gouache. And I tend to use a smaller one, so I would use ones like, um, well, that's a, that's a hair, like a wisp brush for hair. I would use, that probably like the biggest brush that I would use for gouache, um, unless I was doing like a watery background. So small, Taclon, synthetic brushes are the way to go, I think. Uh, this, you know, little filberts, little flats work the best. 
and uh, plastic handles if you can find them because then they don't, you know, you don't have to worry about forgetting them in the water. So there's my, uh, my recommendation as far as brushes. You probably have something like this. These are easy to come by at any craft store, very inexpensive. So that would be my pick. These, however, I would use for oil paints. Personally, that's probably what I'll probably stick these right in my oil painting stash or I'll put them in a jar to sit aesthetically pleasingly on my shelf because they are pretty to look at. I have to say they have a gorgeous matte finish to the handle. Um, I will say though, <laughs> some of these brushes are not exactly straight. If you look at this brush, it like, it has a severe bend to it, which would keep it from rolling off your table, which is good, but not exactly what you want in a paintbrush. So yeah, I, I'd skip the brushes or, or if you get the brushes, and you're not happy with them in the gouache because I really don't think you'll be happy using these with gouache unless you're on canvas because you do need a stiffer brush for that. Use these for uh, heavy body acrylics or oil paints and you'll be much happier with them. I mean, the box is super cute. The packaging is just gorgeous, but I don't think it's worth paying the extra money to get these brushes um, unless you're going to use them for something else other than the paint that comes with us. So I hope this was helpful. Um, like I said, I received these for free. It doesn't affect my opinion of them. If I didn't like them, I'd let you know. Um, I, I'm not crazy about the brushes. But um, I, I would say if you need some gouache, go ahead and get it. I'd say if you already had Arteza gouache and you're perfectly happy with it and you had a palette for it, you don't need these. This isn't going to do anything that the Arteza gouache or any other gouache you have, unless it's really, you know, streaky and transparent and you're not happy with it, it's not going to do anything different, but if you're looking for a nice starter set of gouache, I'd say go for it. The palette's wonderful, the paints are great, and um, I've been enjoying painting with it quite a bit. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this helpful if you were looking for these paints. If you have any questions, go pop them in the comments and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Please give me a thumbs up if you like these review videos and I'll know to make more. Until next time, happy crafting!